Hi, my name is Paula Willey. I'm a children's librarian in the Southeast Anchor Branch of Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore. And today we have a special craft in honor of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. I'm going to teach you how to do kumihimo braiding, which is an ancient Japanese braiding technique. We're going to make a little friendship bracelet with eight strands of yarn or cord. Now, kumihimo, you can use kumihimo to make extremely complicated, fancy braids in all kinds of different shapes. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the history of kumihimo as we do our craft. But for now, all you need to know is what you need. You need a piece of cardboard, ruler, and two colors or two types of yarn, just two, yarn or cord or string. You're also going to need a pencil and a pair of scissors. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, the first step in this craft is to make our own version of a kumihimo loom. This is the kind of kumihimo loom that you can find in a craft store. It's made of foam. It has these little slits for where you put your, your uh, cords or yarn, and it's got a hole in the center. Hello. We don't have, or we're, go we're going to pretend we don't have a kumihimo loom, so we need to make our own. Find yourself a decent piece of thick cardboard. This is the flap from a box. And you want something circular that is about six inches around. We're gonna trace our bowl on the cardboard Around and around we go. And then we need to draw a square around the circle. The reason why we do this is, is to find the center of the circle. If you cut out the circle and then need to find the center of it, it's really difficult and requires a lot of geometry. Easiest to do it this way. So it was a circle in a square. Draw a diagonal between the points of the square, the corners of the square. And there's our center. Cut out your circle. And we're going to need to make slits around the circumference of the circle, just like the commercial loom. Mark out three points, more or less equidistant, between your 90 degree sections of the loom. Three on one side, and then we're going to mark a point opposite on the circle. Put your ruler down, Make sure it goes through the center point of the disc. Mark out a slit on one side and then on the other. Then move your ruler. And again, making sure you're going through the center point of the disc. Mark out a slit on one side and then on the other. Do this in the other quadrant of your disc so that you have slits marked all the way around the circle. Once you've marked them, cut the slits. They do not need to be this deep. In fact, I don't suggest it. Cut your slits about half an inch deep, a centimeter. And then we're back where we started. The trickiest part of this whole deal is cutting the hole in the center. Remember, we wanted to be able to stick our finger through that. I can't find any better way better to do it than to just punch through with your scissors. Start with a pie-shaped cut. Cut that out and then go around. Time to start braiding. 
Okay, we're going to do an eight strand bracelet. So I'm going to measure out four pieces each of my two colors. You need three times the length of your finished project. So measure out how long you need your bracelet to be. So, and then double one, it over twice. Two, three. That is the length of cord I need for this project. I can either cut eight strands that long or I can cut four strands twice that long, which is what I'm gonna do. And you'll see immediately it will make sense. So doubling this over, and then cut two strands this long of one color and two strands this long of the other color. And now we'll cut the same length of the yellow. So now I have four strands of cord, each of which is about six times the length of my completed project. I'll take them all together and then double them so that I have eight strands. Now we're gonna tie these eight strands together at their midpoint using a piece of scrap yarn. This yarn is gonna go away at the end so it doesn't matter what color it is. Now it's best to have a little weight that you can use. It will keep your braid straight. So after you poke your strands through the center of the loom, clip on maybe a set of keys or something like that. We're not using them for anything else right now. Through that main loop. Take another little piece of yarn and tie off the strings right above where the weight is. That's nice and stable. And we can start threading our loom. With the number one slot away from you, thread the colors in pairs. Two of one color at the top. Two of the other color perpendicular at the sides, two of your first color down here, and two of the other color at the other side. Tighten them so that the come together point is right in the middle of that hole in the middle. You do want to keep these kind of tight. See how I have them evenly spaced? There's two slits in between each grouping. Okay, are we ready to start? It's easy. All right, take your upper right and take it to the lower right. Take your lower left and put it to the upper left. Want me to do that again? This is key. This is the one thing that you're going to do 150 times in order to finish your friendship bracelet. So it's important to get it right. Upper right goes to the lower right. Lower left goes to the upper left. 
That's all there is to it. Now turn your disc. Upper right goes to the lower right. Lower left goes to the upper left. You did it. Turn again. According to the book, Kumihimo, Japanese Silk Braiding Techniques by Catherine Martin, the earliest indications of the use of Kumihimo braiding in Japan can be seen on pots discovered at sites all over the country and dating from about 7500 BC. The first books that documented Kumihimo patterns were from the 1600s, and at that time, and even now, Kumihimo is done traditionally on a standing wooden loom called a marudai. There's also a square version called a takudai. Kumihimo braiding was used to lace up samurai armor or to uh, hold together a, a samurai sword and its scabbard. That cord is called a sageo. And it's used as fastenings for jackets and to hold on the wide obi sash. That cord is called an obijime, and it's often knotted in elaborate patterns. I'm using nylon satin cord for this project, but you might be using wool or cotton or acrylic yarn, or even embroidery floss. However, traditional Japanese braids, often used to decorate Shinto temples, were made of untwisted dyed silk threads that were bunched together. And look, already we can see the pattern of our braid emerging. Now all you have to do is repeat this action about a zillion more times and you're going to have a nice braid. I'm going to take a break and go watch TV or listen to an audiobook while I braid. Okay, so we've been weaving our Kumihimo braid for a while now and look at this beautiful spiral that we've woven. And it's time to tie it off. When you've got, when you're down to about an inch, see this is now so short, you can just barely get it in there. You're done. As long as your braid is long enough for what you want. Take two of the shortest strings that are across from each other. Pull them towards the center and tie them off. However you're going to finish your braid, this will keep it from unraveling while you make your decisions. Now take off all of the other strands, pull it through, say goodbye to Mr. Loom. You can turn this into a key ring like this one. You can use it as a fob for the key ring that you were working with as a weight. Or you can take it off and turn it into a bracelet. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Taking off the weight, and since we tied this loop, we still have that hole there that we can thread half of these strings through If you've made this friendship bracelet for yourself, here's the point where you're going to need an extra hand. I made this friendship bracelet for my teenage son, so I'm gonna show you how to fasten it onto 
his arm. Hello, disembodied arm. Oh. You can tie it if you wanted to, but depending on the kind of cord you've used, that might end up being kind of a bulky knot. The other thing we can do is take the same cord or a different cord or just take one of the loose ends of this cord and wrap the two ends together and do a few passes around so that it's nice and tight and that it looks finished. That's good. And now we'll tie it in a double knot. And snip off our ends. How does that feel? Good. How does it look? Also good. Awesome. If you get into it, Kumihimo can end up being pretty addictive. Here are a couple of books that I've checked out from the Pratt Library telling you how to make a variety of braids. Kumihimo braids can be simple or complicated. They could be square, flat, round, ridged, multi-part, beaded. They can be used to make lanyards, keychains, bracelets, and more. Uh-oh, did I almost forget the most important part again? Clean up your area. Asian Pacific American Heritage Month lasts throughout the month of May. Check back on our website to find more crafts and activities related to Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And thanks for making a Kumihimo bracelet with me today.